You're now live. So welcome to Dion Warwick, Queen of Twitter. You know about Dion Warwick, right? Are you a fan? Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I don't know. She is amazing. Yeah. The, but anyway, yeah. Wow, look amazing. Look great. So this exhibition spotlights her legacy through the lens of her Twitter account. So last year she went viral on Twitter for all her tweets that really resonated with people during the pandemic and the civil unrest. And so it spotlights how creative resilience, how you can use creativity, whether it's on social media or the arts, to really connect people. So this is a timeline of her legacy, musical legacy. So you know, she started singing in Newark. Had her grandfather's church at the age of six. She knew all stage, and that was her debut. And she was her family, since he was going to her aunt, he was her cousin. They all stayed in the New York Baptist Church. So this little spot breaks down her career. And one important thing to note is that she came up during the Civil Rights Movement. And there was, it was so hard for a black woman to become an international pop star during that time. So she broke a lot of ground and really set the blueprint for many others that followed. Um, and so, you know, she was even before Rita Franklin. Like, she was the star. Uh, so really important figure. So we'll talk about some of the items. So you're probably wondering why this ugly sweater is here. <laughs> I saw your eyebrows later. <laughs> So she tweeted to Jimmy Fallon, the Tonight Show host. She said, oh, I would love to have one of those ugly sweaters. And so he made her this sweater. Wow. Yes, and so this is a sweater made by Jimmy Fallon for Dionne Warwick. And she wears it, and if you scan the pole here, you can see her wearing it in a video. And this is her hat from uh, the Raiders. And you know, she loves wearing a cap in her downtime. You know it, right? And so, these are things that she longed for her collection as well. It's a little fun moment. This is the library. So you're welcome to grab a book and sit down and go through it. And it has a memoir. It has a, a book with tons of pictures. Her children's books. And the song book of Bacharach and David. You know Bacharach and David, right? No? You know, no? You know Bacharach and David? Yeah, they were right. Still in prayer, what the world is now. So we're back by how they did. This is the archival wall. So these are a few items that she owns and some items from my collection. So she's done a lot of Jet Magazine covers. I don't know if you ever saw a Jet Magazine this small. Have you? You have, right? So this is from 1966. It was 20 cents. So we have some, uh, you know, so solid gold. You saw it? Okay. So she was the first season and the fifth season's host. And she was also the first host with Luther Vandross for the Soul Chain Music Awards. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. So we have album covers. We have a video. So this is a PBS documentary that you can watch. Um, as well as she did some special content for the exhibition where she talks about her tweets and, and her life and some concert programs, and some ticket stubs. And this is a letter from Senator Cory Booker acknowledging her cultural contributions and charitable endeavors and a plaque in Congress that she received as well. So this really contextualizes her history. And now we get to the art. So this is by Pamela Council. Uh, she is an artist based in Newark. And this is a neon art piece. So Dion tweeted, um, someone might ask her kids, could Dion be, be her auntie? And if you know about black culture, auntie is an honor record. It's a, it's a title of a said, no, Dion's just for black people. She said, I am everyone's auntie. And so this really celebrates how she unites people and it honors the aunties in our lives who are those important um, mother figures and elders and mentors. So you, you're meant to like take a photo here, you know. <laughs> She said, yes, so yeah. Only our auntie. I don't care what they say. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, she, she's our auntie first. She's our first okay. auntie. She's their second auntie. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is a painting by Joel Lopez, artist based in New York. You like it? So, in this one, the tweet is you can get this God. God. This is a God reference to really spotlight her religious roots that I mentioned earlier. And so you have 
the stained glass background that acts as a crown or a halo. And she really, he really wants to celebrate her queendom. Not just the queen of Twitter, but the queen of music, the queen of many things. And so that's why she's posed very regal here. And I don't know, if you look closely, do you see references to Twitter in the... So, the Twitter logo is a bird. Do you see a bird? Yes, right here. So that's a little reference to Twitter. <laughs> but it could also be a dove, a symbol of peace, right? Okay. <laughs> So this is artist Bo McCall, who's over there in the corner. I don't know if you're going to speak to us or not. <laughs> the one with the, the yellow mask. Yeah. Bo? Bo, are you going to talk to the people? Hey. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Tom. I appreciate everything about it. We'll start with this one, so. Okay, so. Um, I picked all the humorous tweets, the ones that I thought was funny and sassy, what have you. And um, uh, she made a reference that she was getting a new hairdo. And uh, she told everybody to tweet her with different hairdos. <laughs> so I tweeted her with Nicki Minaj's hairdo. <laughs> and these are um, collages done the old fashioned way. These are not um, paper and paste, all that kind of stuff. Um, the buttons in the background, well, it, all the entire thing with buttons are buttons from previous works. Like, the, the, like I would take photographs of this and then I would piece it out and make these type of collages out of it. So what's with you and buttons? Um, everybody's jar, I mean everybody's jar. Yes. Everybody's mother or grandmother yes, has indeed. a jar of buttons or a can of buttons in yep. their house So that's how I got attracted to the buttons. So at this point in my life, I'm addicted to buttons. Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> so Tiana Taylor, um, Deion said, "Don't tell her what a hot girl is." And we know Tiana Taylor is getting ready to do Deion in the biopic. And Tiana Taylor, to me, is the hottest of the hot girls right now, the current hot girls. And if you look real close, they they kind of favor. They sure do them cheekbones. Look yeah, at the cheekbones. Yeah. So that's why I picked her. And the Wendy Williams. Oh, and then what, I don't know what the statement Wendy said on her show about Dion, uh -oh. but of course Dion, she was not, she backed down from no one, and she replied, um, "What do I look like uh, standing in front of Dion, South throwing eggs at her?" So this oh. is Dion in, in her house. I mean, this is Wendy in the house, <laughs> and Dion throwing eggs at her. That was the case. So you know, I thought they was all comical, yeah. and I was trying yeah. my best to interpret them in, in, in that style of fashion. And then this is um, her and Chance the Rapper, because she couldn't understand why he was calling himself Chance the Rapper. So she calls her so. And the last one, I'm Dion the Singer. <laughs> <laughs> so I had a lot of fun doing them. Um, this is my second foray into doing collages. So I, I think they're getting better. Mm -hmm. Any questions from the call before we move on? And then y'all know she's obsessed with fanny packs. She, she says she don't give a damn when nobody says she's wearing her fanny pack. <laughs> <laughs> what else? Um, you know, her doing a COVID mask. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Thank you. So what's about your attention here? So this is my man. And this is actually a W, I know it's a little hard to oh, tell. Oh. But it works as okay. here as well. It works either way. And so this is verbatim the tweet that Dion wrote. And she was referencing DMX and the media. So DMX is a close family friend. And when he was hospitalized, there was a lot of... So she, so Philandis takes this to uh, target anyone in positions of power to remind them you have a moral responsibility not just to do your job but to do the right thing or else karma will get you. And specifically he's referencing the killing of black people by police. Because often that's the excuse, oh we're just doing our job. Um, so this really uh, targets that as well.
So this is where her tweets become more serious uh, to reflect the uh, the trauma we all experienced during the pandemic and civil unrest. Um, and this this is an installation about keeping up. So Lavette wanted to spotlight all of the things Dion as a black woman in America has seen, lived through, experienced. Um, and so you have these collages on wood boxes of Dion. Uh, you're welcome to sit on the chair on the pew and reflect on the black woman's narrative and Dion's legacy. Have a seat, Jackie. Yes, yeah, so this is another selfie yes. moment, another yes. moment of reflection. Beautiful. And you know, in the church, you got all your little things, yes. <laughs> your modesty scarves, yep. your gloves, your water, your mess, everything. Um, and so, again, reflecting Dion's uh, spiritual in this installation as well. This is Diane Smith, and the tweet she's referencing is um, the song for Dion was talking about the state of our country and specifically referencing the capital attacks as well as the, the uh, killing of Dante Wright, another person killed by police. And um, Diane uses that to really create this video where she takes images of Miss Warwick and contextualizes them within uh, black history, specifically civil rights movement, to really showcase Dion's socially conscious side. Like I said earlier, she came up during the civil rights movement, and although she was not marching in the streets with them, she's always been very conscious. She has, she started a scholarship early in her career for newer students. She's always giving back. The song, That's What Friends Are For, I don't know if you know the backstory, Intuity go towards Amphorge. So she was one of the first celebrities to really be outspoken in, as an AIDS activist. And that was um, who got AIDS. She was a, she was a, an ambassador um, for the U for the United States as well. So she's always giving back. And in one interview, she said, "I'm not a marcher, I'm a doer." So, <laughs> but when she recites the lyrics without the music, it really brings out the magic. And this installation is like a shrine or altar. All butch paper that she crumpled. Mm -hmm. And typically she works on the wall, but for this, she wanted to leave the wall bare as it came to really represent the struggle and um, work more mainly in this space. This is butch paper. So the artist works with butch paper because she likes it to grab skin and the black skin and black body. And so that's why she accompanies it to reflect our experiences, not just the struggle, but also the beauty, the joy, and how those experiences leave marks on us, for good or bad. And also, she grew up around her family needing dough, so there was something about working with the hands and twisting that she just gravitated to, and the paper allowed her to recreate that experience through the manipulation of it. And, and what is the, the, the feeling? The paint peeling from the wall. What is yeah, that? What so, the, so the backstory of this space, um, Lauren and Marcy found this beautiful space, which was originally Petco. So the wall, you see the stripes on that wall? Uh -huh. They were all over. So we had to paint the walls white. And then these walls came like this. And we were going to paint them white, but the artist came and saw the space and said, no, I want those walls to stay as they are. Because this video is talking about struggle and tension, she wanted that wallness in the space to match with the butcher paper. So, you know, artists see things, see beauty where we normally wouldn't. But, you know, I think it works within her installation. There's also a nice pop of color that gleams, to accentuate the green in the butcher paper. Yeah. <laughs> and so that is a, that's another exhibition to talk later of the rebellion spirit by Adrian Wheeler. So there's two shows in here, so you're welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Celia. Bye-bye. Oh, and tell people the, the exhibit is open through the end of the month. It's open through October 29th. I'm doing tours, guided tours every Saturday. So go to my Instagram page at Solio Universe, S-O-U-L-E-O Universe, to click the link in my bio for the tour. Or new
thebookartsfestival.com and it's on there too. Yes, and then the exi- the gallery is open fr- Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Mm-hmm. And go to norgarsfestival.com. 12 to 7, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Bye. Thank you. Good job. That was good impromptu. We're going to put this on the page.